What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, back with another two-minute drill episode, Tuesday, July 27th. And, you know, before we get into the episode, make sure to subscribe. Like, 82% of everyone who watches these videos aren't, isn't subscribed. Y'all just creep it on the channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Turn on your post notifications, man. We really, really appreciate it. Listen, go check out our interview today. Th this kid deserves all the shine, has a great story. Javin Adderley, man, sacred heart running back of true freshman men. You know, it was great to have him on the show, and uh, I was absolutely pumped, man, to have him on here, man. He's a beast on the defensive side of the ball, man, so make sure to check it out and, you know, give it a big thumbs up and everything, man. We got to keep promoting these players, and so let's get right into it, man. You can check out our two-minute drill yesterday as well, but Jackson State, continues their role we covered the commitment of trey glimp the kicker four and a half stars yesterday and they kept it coming they don't he this guy isn't four and a half stars brandon this guy's just four stars but um still pretty good we got malachi wadman transfer from tennessee he committed to tennessee we know all the scandal and everything that happened in tennessee man we don't have to rehash it let's just say the mcdonald's bags were handed out Everybody lost their jobs, and it was a real bad situation up there in Knoxville. But Malachi Wadman man, commits to Jackson State, and he was the number 117th overall player in the 2020 class out of Venice, Florida. And, Brandon, this kid, 6'5", 200 pounds, man, and also plays basketball, will be playing basketball at Jackson State from all indications. 65 catches, over a thousand yards, and 13 touchdowns. Brandon in his senior year, this kid is a baller. So, what do you think of the commitment, and what is Jackson State getting out of Wadman as he comes in from Knoxville? They're getting uh, just a huge receiver, Zach. And, and it's I'm not just talking about like body mass because this dude is a giant, but like, like I mean, you and I were talking about this before, and I'm not going to try to steal any of your shine here. You were telling me all about him, but. Like this dude can he can actually ball he can play. Um, now watching his film, one of the things I notice is because he is so big, he can just get over everybody. I mean, I saw him in like he, he had like three defenders around him. All he had to do was like barely jump. And by the way, this dude can get off the ground too. I mean, he plays basketball, so that's probably a given. But like he just had to barely jump, and he's over everybody already. Um, and, you know, I told you this before we started recording, but what's almost more impressive to me is that not only did he play football at Tennessee, but he, he was on the basketball team. Like he, can, like he can play both sports. And that Tennessee basketball team is the real deal. So I, I would assume that if he was good enough to be on that basketball team, he's probably good enough to be on any basketball team in the country, to be completely honest. Um, so, I mean, the fact that he can play two sports and excel at both, that's huge for Jackson State. Um, he's going to be, I think, an immediate contributor in this offense. And I say that about a lot of kids. But this guy, I think he's different. I, and, and you and I, like I said, we were talking about it before, Zach. But he might be Jackson State's, like, number one target, like, immediately. And it's crazy because I didn't know, like, how um, like how late players could come in and, you know, sign with the team, then expect to still play this fall. I definitely expect this kid to play this fall. And like if that's if that's not a testament to how good he is, I don't know what is. It's hard to say like at a collegiate level how great he is. You know, a lot of guys you can say, oh, well, they played at this school, they played at this school. He played at Tennessee and he played in six games, but he only had one reception. Um, but as you pointed out to me, he had Jared Garantano passing to him. So that's kind of a <laughs> downside. Um, one of the more impressive things to me too, Zach, is that in his high school film. When I was watching it, uh, I don't – his quarterback either overthrew him or underthrew him on my – what seemed like every single pass. And you just saw this dude making like some circus catches, like like reaching behind himself with one arm and, and just somehow catching a ball and not only catching it but being able to like keep his footing and, and you know, get some yards after catch, which is nuts. So, uh, I mean, what are your thoughts about him? And what do you think that he brings to Jackson State? 
Well, I mean, you mentioned like his basketball skills. I mean, Brandon, like coming out, um, let me get the scout's name actually. John Garcia Jr., who's one of like the top two four seven scouts um in the country. Um, he said that like he thinks a pro career in basketball is possible if he committed to it. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like he I, and I didn't watch his basketball film, but I can just tell, like, just by the way this dude plays football, like I I, I already know that he's like crashing boards. Like he's he's going nuts in the basketball court. Yeah, I mean, listen, I should I should have put his highlight film in here, but you know, Huddle's weird for copyright stuff sometimes. So like we just so we took we we didn't want to take the risk, but and he has some dunks on that thing, man. Like if it what if Jackson State decides to do a dunk contest. My money's going on Malachi Wadman, man. I'm telling you. But, you know, the biggest thing for me, Brandon, is sometimes you see these guys with 6'5 height with big catch radiuses that don't, that they don't have any ball skills, though. They're yeah. just big. And, like, if the quarterback doesn't put it in the right spot, they're not going to be able to make the play. But for him, he has a superb, like he has superb ball skills. Like he understands how to high point the ball. He understands how he needs to position his body in coverage, one on one, or maybe even two on one with a defender. He understands how to use his body, use his catch radius, use his height, and he has outstanding body control. Man, there were some catches where he adjusted last second to the ball and never seemed to like kind of lose control of where he was. Right. Absolutely outstanding, man. Listen, and I get it. They have a lot of returning production with Jackson. Well, not a lot of returning production, but I believe it's Corey Reed Jr. last year. It's their leading receiver returning again now that Dalen Baldwin's out. They also have Warren Newman coming back, who let who's the leading receiving touchdown holder right now for this squad. And they have a lot of, you know, Shane Hooks came in and a lot of these other guys. But for me, I feel like Wadman is going to be the number one red zone threat. I don't think any of the other options has the size, the leaping ability, the catch radius that this guy has. And, you know, whether he becomes an every down threat or anything like that, if Shadur's ever in pressure or ever uncertain and he knows he has one on one coverage, the worst thing he could, you know, the best thing he could do is throw it up and give Wadman a chance because with his ball skills, with his leaping ability, I, you know, I would say 50 or more percent of the time, he's probably going to come down with it or at least prevent an interception and make a good attempt at getting the ball into his possession. Yeah. And, and you, go ahead. Oh, what I'll, what I'll say is that, you know, I, and I know you made an argument for like the other wide receivers on the team. I think that we've kind of seen by this point that, that coach prime is not afraid to start these guys to transfer in immediately. I mean, Niles Gaddy's getting his shot. You know, he, he, he announced in media days that he's going to be a starter. Um, so I, I don't I don't think he's going to be afraid just because he transferred in so late to give him a shot if he, like, wins the position in the next few weeks. Yeah. And, you know, the, the last topic, I want to talk about the wide receiver room, but, you know, the last few things here is that, you know, I think they have a good mix of wide receivers – the only thing I'm I'm because uh, I want to see for Wadman is I know a lot of people are going to point to the production at Tennessee, but like Brandon said, uh, listen, I, I know I know we're covering SWAC football right now. I don't know how many of you guys you know are up on the SEC talk, but Jared Garantano shouldn't even be able to start at a high school right now. Like that kid, like it got so bad, guys. When he transferred from Tennessee, he said Washington State now. Every article the Washington State beat reporters post on Garantano, Tennessee fans still go on that post to hate on Garantano. Like, that's how bad he was during his time at Tennessee. So let's just take a deep breath. And Tennessee became very run dependent as well yeah. last year. So let's pump the brakes on just like tearing his stats apart. But like I always say on this podcast, man, everything looks great on paper. I want to see what this kid comes out with at Jackson State. I'm consistent with that. But just, you know, I was telling Brandon before the show, just based on pure athleticism, size, and potential, right now I really do think Wadman has the most potential out of any wide receiver on the JSU roster. And, yeah. you know, I'm not saying he's going to be the superstar, he's going to be the swat player, the, anything like that. I'm just saying based on everything I see right now in terms of measurables, he should be able to make an immediate impact 
and be the wide receiver one either this year or next year for Jackson State? Because it is a little late, Brandon. We're, we're recording here on July 27th, and we only got about a month till the season. So that's really quick to try to develop chemistry with Shadur, but we also don't know how long he's been on campus for or okay. anything like that. So it could be a thing where he's known he's going to be there, has already been to campus, everything like that, met everybody, and kind of started to get himself ingrained into the offense. But, you know, I'm very excited for Weidman. I'm excited to see how Coach Prime and this offense uses them. But I want to move on to our last topic, Brandon. And this is – we see this embarrassment of riches – for Jackson State. I mean, let's be honest. We got Wadman, we got Corey Reed, we got Shane Hooks, Trevante Rucker, who was a four-star this past class, and Quay and uh Quadarius Davis or Quay Davis, who was the four-star transfer from I believe it was Kansas. And so you and then you still have Warren Newman coming back. You I mean, and so you have a lot of wide receivers in that room. For you though, if you had to, you know, kind of put your finger on it. Who's really, you know, the leader of this room? And, you know, who do you think sees the field? And, you know, how do they balance out all this talent they have in this wide receiving room? Yeah, I kind of want to lean toward Corey Reed here. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how they how they utilize, you know, if, uh, if, if Weidman does come in and start, I don't know how both of them do. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, they're, not, they're not the same exact player, but – like they have similar bills. They're both huge wide receivers. I mean, Corey Reed six three two ten. Like that's that's huge. Uh, not quite as big as Weidman, but I, I mean, maybe if you both if you play them both on the outsides, then that could work. Yeah. But what what were you gonna say? You you uh you had something? Oh, I was gonna say you could put them on the outside because I yeah. think they have a clear slot threat uh, a slot threat in Newman because he's only I believe well, let me double check. I think it's five eight. Yeah, 5'8", 175. And so he's your perfect kind of like utility man, I would say. But then also you have all these transfers, man, and they all want to be fed. So, I mean, do you think we uh, – How I've always been very vocal about Jackson State has to run the ball this year, but I think to get all these guys touches, you're going to have to be in a lot of four or five wide receiver sets. So I'm interested to see what their offense is going to look like. You know, we know what Alabama a and is going to bring with the Quill Glass – we kind of know what Alabama State's bringing. We know what FAMU's probably going to bring. We know what Southern's bringing, Alcorn's bringing. But there's so many unknowns with this Jackson State offense with a new quarterback. You know, uh, what, a whole new group of receivers except for, like, two people, new right. running backs, new offensive line. Like, I don't know what exactly their scheme's going to be. I still think they don't need, uh, they need to stick with the run as much as they can at times, especially with a true freshman quarterback. But at the same time, you have so much talent at wide receiver. When do you just say, okay, we got to we got to get you ready. Go get it to the playmakers on the outside. Yeah, that, that's true. And I do think it would be interesting to see uh, Reed and Weidman on the outsides because I think, I mean, I think Weidman, if you watch his film at least, and, you know, like we said, we don't really have a whole lot from last season, so I can't speak on the collision level, but if you watch this high school film, like he's he's an actual deep threat. Like he can run down yeah. the field. And Shadur's got a cannon. Like, like he's got an arm. <laughs> uh, any Jackson State fan in the comments section will tell you that. Um, but, I, I mean, I think that if you have both of these guys on the outsides in, in this offense, um, that could be dangerous. It, it really could. And, and even if you didn't want to send them both deep all the time, even if you didn't want them both to be a deep threat, like you were saying, I, I mean, I think Weidman's the kind of guy who's that versatile – who can run like a little drag route, who who can be that safety net for Shadur if things do go wrong. But as as for um, leadership, I mean, I'll go back to that real quick. I, like I said, I, I'm leaning Corey Reed here. I, I you know he's he's got the experience. Last season he was uh, I think he was second receptions last year, um, but he's a junior and, and, and he's coming back. He's had this playing time, and I don't know. He, I, I think he has some of these good leadership qualities. Yeah, I think it's going to be some combination of Newman and, yeah. and, 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 and you know, probably Reed. But, like, you know, in terms in, in terms of how they're going to use them, I think – so I think Newman's going to see a lot of targets early, Brandon, because he's the type of guy you can hit on a screen. You can hit behind the line of scrimmage and get him into space. People forget he had four touchdowns against Alabama A&M last season. 
Right. And, you know, he played really well down the stretch. And so I think if you can get him in the space, he can be dynamic and you can get Shooter's confidence built up on those short, you know, those short behind the line of scrimmage routes. But then, like you said, with his arm strength and with his ability to push the ball down the field, you also have Wadman, who I think early can really, you know, bail out Shadur if he's not hitting the right target. If he's like, like you said, there's so much film of Wadman bailing out his high school quarterback from overthrows, underthrows, and making, you know, small mistakes of the young quarterback that uh, I guess small mistakes that a young quarterback could make. He's the type of player that can bail them out. And so I think Wadman and Newman are really, really important for the development of Shadur early in the season. But then you also have Reed, who it, who can be that intermediate route running threat that you need over the middle and things like that. And you also have Corbin and Hooks and even Quay Davis that can do it at all levels. So you have a, so the one thing I'll give Jackson State credit for is they have a versatile set of wide receivers. You got the shifty fast slot guy in Newman. You have the outside deep threat in um in Malachi Wadman, you have the route runners in Corbin Hooks and even Corey Reed. You've got the deep threats in Wadman and Reed. And so I'm yeah. very, very excited to see how Coach Prime in this offense develops, how they scheme them open early in the season, especially with the young quarterback. But with all the confidence that they're showing, I have no doubt that Coach Prime has full confidence in Shadur to go make the plays. And I don't even know if we'll see a reduced playbook early. That's true. And, and I want to go back real quick and cover my tracks. I'm not necessarily saying Weidman will start. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I feel like we got to cover our tracks sometimes and kind of clear some things up. But um, he definitely could. I'm not saying he's going to beat these other guys out, so I don't want y'all coming for me right here. I just think he has the talent that he could if he needed to. And it's also it's always good to have a deep wide receiver room, Zach. I, I mean, that couldn't be a bad thing. It's not like you're wasting talent. You know, you have these guys going out on routes. They can't play every single down, or maybe if they do play every single down in position in possession, they can't play every single possession. You know, it, it's it is hot. We're playing in Jackson, Mississippi. We're playing all across the southeast United States in the SWAC. And so, funny enough, but um, I don't know, man. I, I think having this deep wide receiver room and, and adding on Wyman does nothing but good things for Jackson State. And I mean, I guess another storyline could be like with the shortened season, you know, are we going to see an increased amount of injuries this year? And like with people not playing people, you know, it, there's a lot of unknowns there. And we saw with Alabama this year, their depth at the wide receiving room saved them when they had some injuries pop up, you know, in the national championship game, Devontae Smith and Waddle were out. Then they lose Waddle and Mechie steps up. So Having a deep wide receiver room is always a good thing. And with a full season, you're bound to have some injuries. And so to have guys step up in those roles is great. And when you're debuting a freshman quarterback that has never played a snap of college football, the, the two best things to have is offensive line and wide receivers. And you definitely check the box for wide receiver. We'll see about the offensive line as the season approaches. But at least he's got some targets and they're versatile in what skills that they bring to the offense. So I'm very excited to see how Jackson State uses this group. But guys, comment below what you think of the Wideman commitment. Think about who you think will lead the Jackson State wide receiver room and how these, I guess, abundance of wide receivers will be used um, you know, throughout the season and everything like that. And you know, make sure to go check out our interview with Javin Adderley, man. It, great, great interview, and I appreciate him coming on the show. And make sure to go check out all our interviews, man, that we've dropped this week. And, you know, Malik Honeycutt, Murray State, kick returner and wide receiver was yesterday. Eric Berrier was last week as well. Demetrius Taylor from Appalachian State. And we got some big guests lined up, man. Can't wait to, you know, make some more announcements later on. But, guys, for B-Dub, myself, the Blue Bloods, the two-minute drill and everything, man, we are out and we will see y'all tomorrow.